In this video, I'm going to be discussing the continuity of a function at a given point. Now, before we go to the algebraic definition, it's important to note that when we talk about a function being continuous, so continuity of a function, it means we can draw the function. Right? We can draw f of x without lifting our pen. So example, the straight line. I just drew this without having to lift my pen. So from the start point to the end point, it was one continuous line which was completely drawn without lifting my pen until I knew that that is where I wanted to stop. Right, so continuity of a function in layman's terms means you can draw it without lifting your pen. So algebraically now and mathematically, how do we write that? So the algebraic definition is as follows. So a function f of x is continuous at x equals to a if the following are satisfied. Right? So the first is that f at a is defined. That's the first condition. The second condition is that the limit as x approaches a, sorry, the limit of f of x as x approaches a exists. Right? And the third is actually now a combination of number one and two. The third says that the limit of f of x as x approaches a, since we know it does exist, it must equal to something. So that particular value that it should equal to is the value of f at a. Now remember, if f at a is defined, then when you're drawing the point a comma f at a, since it is defined, that coordinate will be drawn with a solid dot. So keep that in mind based on the notation and the rules we've learned before. So in order for a function f of x to be continuous, at the point x equals to a, so we're talking about continuity at a point only, all three definitions, all three steps and conditions that I've stated here, one, two, and three, must be satisfied. If one, if only one, um, if one or more of one, two, or three are not satisfied, then we say that it's not continuous at x equals to a. And the term for that is called discontinuous. So I'll make a note of that. So if at least one of the three conditions mentioned above are not satisfied, then we say that f of x is discontinuous at x equals to a. More importantly, in your set of notes, I had given you the definition for continuity in, a, in an interval. Remember, a function is continuous in an entire interval if it, is, if it is continuous at every point in that interval. Now, in particular, keep in mind that I've now given you the definition of discontinuous. So, um, going back to our intuitive understanding of continuity, for it to be discontinuous at a point means that at that point you would have lifted your pen and then had to place it back down at a later point to continue draw drawing the graph. So keep that in mind. You've got something that's intuitive and you've got an algebraic definition. Now, um, some of the common questions that you might encounter is to find out where a function is discontinuous. So graphically, as I just mentioned, this occurs when there is a break in the graph, right? So you had to lift your pen. I'll give you an example. Right, so example, if I had the following. similar to that. So I've got a straight line and then suddenly from that point I have to lift my pen, jump above to continue drawing the graph. 
So this is a graph that is discontinuous at x equals to a. So at that x value I had drawn, picked up my pen, lifted it, dropped back down to draw the rest of the graph. So graphically if you were given a picture you'd be able to tell if the graph is discontinuous at a point. And then algebraically, of course, you would then have to verify that one of those conditions was not satisfied. And alternatively, you could have some type of intuitive idea as to whether it's discontinuous uh, by looking at, you can consider, let's say, troublesome. That's the term I've used in your notes troublesome points in the formula of a function. So um, in particular if you were given a function that was a fraction, so let's say it was p of x over q of x, then observe that q of x, the denominator cannot be zero. So find the x values for which the denominator is zero and that would be a troublesome point that you would now have to check if there is a discontinuity or if there isn't. Alternatively, if you were given a split function, then remember in split functions you have different rules and you have restrictions on the, um, on the domain. So you can then check the splits in the domain and verify those points cause discontinuities or not. So let's look at the following example that I've prepared. So let's consider f of x equals to 1 over x. A very basic graph so the hyperbola has been drawn. Now immediately, if you wanted to discuss the discontinuities, so we're dis we are going to discuss discontinuities of this graph. Based on what I just told you, on the previous slide, I said that you could either look, you could take a guess graphically or you could take a guess algebraically. Algebraically, you can look at the formula of the function and you can consider what's happening in the denominator or I told you look at, it, look at it if it's a split function. So here in the denominator observe that x that cannot equal to 0. So check if f of x is discontinuous shorthand uh, at x equals to 0. And observe that graphically without having to check the definition Observe that if I had to draw this graph, let's say I started at this point, I would have drawn, traced all the way down here, and then once I've come close to the, the y-axis, I would lift my pen, jump all the way to the top to continue drawing the graph until I've come to the end. So immediately you could guess from graphically that it's discontinuous at x equals to 0 because I lifted my pen as I approached x equals to 0 and jumped to the top. But now in mathematics everything must be verified algebraically. So we've already guessed and we've checked graphically that it's discontinuous but now how do I verify algebraically that it's discontinuous? You need to show that one of these three conditions are not satisfied. Right? So that's what we have to do. So one is to find out what is f at 0. Right, and observe that f at 0, since we cannot plug in 0 in the denominator, is not defined. So immediately number 1 is not satisfied, because 1 says that f at a must be defined. So since this is not satisfied, immediately you can conclude discontinuous at x equals to 0, and you can stop. But just for fun, let's continue. Let's just suppose that we didn't know it was discontinuous from looking at number one. So if I went to step two, I would now have to look at the limits from the left and the limits from the right at zero. So let's go from the right. If I had to approach zero from the right, that's what I'm doing. And then, of course, what is happening to the graph from the right? What's happened to the graph? as you can see is that the values of f of x get larger and larger as we go closer to zero. So we observe that the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the right is positive infinity. And what's happening as x approaches zero from the left of f of x? So then that means I'm now moving in that direction. And observe that f, the values of f of x get larger and larger but in the negative way. So 
the magnitude is now negative although it's becoming bigger and bigger at each step so this is now approaching minus infinity so once again these the left hand limit and the right hand limit are not equal to one another and they do not the limit will not exist so as a result once again if you hadn't checked one but you checked two you would immediately conclude that it's discontinuous at x equals to zero and then of course because we've gotten these conclusions for one and two three will also not hold so this is just an example for you to check uh, sorry for you to get used to the procedure of checking if a function has a discontinuity or not remember the first step is to guess where do we have a discontinuity you could either verify that from the graph or by finding the troublesome point by looking at the definition of the function right and that's where i'll stop